And welcome back to another of my banjo escapades. Now, in the previous videos, you saw the banjo. Uh, I got the man or the uh, primer. That's what they call it, the banjo primer. And I also got the case for the ban for the banjo. So today, we're going to delve into uh, Jeff Holwald in his banjo primer deluxe edition. Now let's go ahead and open this book up and see what it has to say. So it does come with a, it's a CD or this DVD right here and with two audio CDs. So here's the introduction. Uh, the Banjo Primer Deluxe Edition is the quickest and easiest way to introduce a newcomer to the joys of playing the banjo. Using the book, DVD, and accompanying practice CDs the student can expect to learn three to four times faster with other, the, the student can expect to learn three to four times faster than with other methods and and be playing their first song within an hour we'll see about that the language in the banjo primer is concise you know th that's one thing that it just dawned on me um, I wasn't gonna really gonna say this, but just talking about me that uh, whenever you learn something new, the very first thing you have to do is learn the language. Um, that goes for anything. And just to give a, an example, my wife and I are gonna buy a sailboat one day and sail around the world. Well, in that process, we've been taking classes and doing a couple sailing trips, and everything there has different language to it uh, as far as left and right starboard port uh, ropes aren't called ropes they're called lines unless they're attached to a sail then they're called sheets so you see everything has it, its own language and um, that's it so I it is true that you have to learn a new language whenever you try to learn something I learned to play the guitar there's a different language there than playing the bandle, uh, banjo Anyway, I digress. Okay, language in, the language in the banjo primer is concise. The photographs are crystal clear. The examples on the DVD are played at several different speeds. Most importantly, the banjo primer does more than just teach each note for note rendition of popular bluegrass tunes. With this book, you will also master the fundamental techniques used to play every banjo tune. Rolls, hammer-ons, pull-offs, and slides. With help from the CDs, the student can make certain that their tone and timing are perfect as well. Thousands of people have learned to play banjo using the banjo primer, and you will too. <laughs> Okay, who is this book for? It says uh, beginners, intermediates, and instructors. Uh, a little bit about the author. How to use this book. This is important. Okay, so we're going to cover this uh, section here, how to use the book. This course is designed to be worked through slowly and methodically. Well, I've got the slowness down. Don't move on, until, don't move on to the next section until you are comfortable with the material you are currently working on. You will probably take, it will probably take the average beginner six to 12 months, so I got plenty of time there, huh? To work their way through the entire course, so don't be in a hurry. A little practice now will pay vast dividends down the line. Okay, so, um, Banjo Deluxe Edition contains the book, the DVDs, and the jam CDs. See, the book uh, is Printed, blah, 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 40 photographs. Uh, the Banjo Primer DVD is included in this book to show you the, the movements of both left and right hand using close up and split screens. The DVD is shot in HD and presented on a 16 by 9 widescreen format to make the movements of each hand perfectly clear. In addition, a large on screen tablature has a moving playback line that points to each note as it is played. The playback line moves at three distinct speeds for each sound and exercise. 
Okay, so uh, so you can also go to banjo.com and you can get, let's see here, as you work through this course, you will wish to visit banjo.com, which contains supplemental material that can prove helpful and interesting in your banjo journey. It also contains lots of additional material that will prove useful upon completion of the Banjo Primer Deluxe Edition. Yep, that's it. Uh, Packet. Uh, so you go. Okay, so then it goes to the table of contents, and um, I was kind of. Uh, well, we'll have to see how this works out because they break down the table of contents, and I'll go ahead and. Yeah, you probably can't read that anyway. Um, so it tells you which page in the book to go to, and then it tells you the associated DVD track, I assume. And then it also tells you which disc, the audio disc, to listen to as well. Um, so I might go on and check that DVD a little later. But uh, first off comes to section one, it's getting started. And it says playing condition. And it, show, it has a picture of the banjo and all the different names. Now, if you've never played a stringed instrument, a lot of these things are going to be new to you. Um, I played a, a stringed instrument, the guitar, and there are a few things different on this than on a guitar, but that's just because of the nature of the banjo um, compared to the guitar. So anyway, let's see here. Uh, take your banjo to a local music store which, if you bought it at a local music store, wouldn't they have already set it up for you? Because he goes on to say, uh, is important, uh, make sure that it is in the proper playing condition and has new strings. If it does, does need adjustment, they can probably do it or recommend someone who works on banjos. Um, the next thing is bridge placement. I like this part because the, when I first got the banjo, uh, I don't know how to properly set it up. I can kind of get a good idea. But uh, they talk about bridge, bridge placement on this because at least on this banjo, the bridge is a floating bridge, which means it isn't attached where the bridge on my guitar, that's firmly attached to the guitar itself, to the body head. Um, so this one right here has a floating, so you can move it up and down the strings. So it talks about the proper bridge placement, which is very important. The easiest way to make sure the bridge is in the proper position is to take a ruler and measure from the nut to the middle of the 12th fret. This should be the exact distance as from the middle of the 12th fret to the edge of the bridge. Once you have this have positioned the bridge properly, take a pencil and mark the location. Okay. Uh, and then at the bottom here, it's, it has little helpful hints here. It says, uh, purchase a music stand. People who use one tend to practice 30% longer. I don't know if that's a made-up statistic. You know what they say, 80% of all statistics are made up. Um, but uh, I do have a music stand, which I've used in guitar uh, playing and practice. So anyway, um, getting back to this bridge thing, though. Let's... Uh, move the camera over to the banjo or move the banjo to the camera, whichever is most uh, convenient. And let's measure and make sure that the bridge is in the correct position. The directions say the bridge placement is very important. And hey, I know this is a bit overkill, but it's what I have available. Um, the bridge placement is very important. The easiest way to make sure the bridge is in the proper position is to Take a ruler and measure from the nut to the middle of the 12th fret. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Look at that. Two dots on there. That should be pretty easy to find. Huh? Well, so if the middle of the 12th fret, I can't get there from here. I'll have to do it this way. So the middle of the 12th fret is... Not really good with this one. I have to go get a tape measure because the numbers aren't as graduated on that one. That only goes to a sixteenth of an inch. So this is roughly twelve and 
three quarter inches. Wow. The base. Third. Oh man, let me, was it when in doubt measure twice or was it? So. Yeah, that's 12 and 3 quarter inches. And then from the middle there, I got 13 and a half. So according to this, it is not in the correct position. It should be exactly the same from the middle of the 12th fit to the edge of the bridge. So let's go ahead and move that. So I would imagine that first thing to do is loose up the tuning pegs. Okay, so they said should be the same, right? So it was did we say twelve and a half inches. Twelve and three quarter inches. Okay, so twelve and three quarter inches. Approximately right there. So I'm gonna get in your way here. <laughs> Sorry guys, I gotta get in your way about this because I don't have the camera really set up in a really good position to do this. They said 12 and 3 quarter inches, so I'm gonna make a little mark there. And I will make the same mark on the other side so that I come up evenly. So, in theory, if I just slide, well, those lines don't look parallel, do they? Here, I'll let you swing around and see that those lines don't quite look parallel. Of course, I don't know if you can see those lines. Yeah, that of the bridge isn't parallel to begin with. Huh. not moving so let's go ahead and release some more tension on these strings that one's loose 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 okay so Still doesn't look even, does it? Let's go ahead and take a look. So I got that right angle. Which is a little too big for this. But that appears to be closer in line with the neck. I'm not really too positive about that. Make sure it's standing up straight. So I imagine you have to have those things perfect. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and measure. Remember it was 12 and 3 quarters. Just a little shy there. A little shy there. So I can move this up a little, I'll move that up a little. We have 12 and 3 quarters. 12 and 3 quarters. Okay, so, and then it says to go ahead and mark the bridge. So we're gonna go ahead and mark that with the pencil again.
and then that should be good. Hopefully if I read the directions correctly, I now have the bridge properly adjusted and set up. So next in the booklet is going to tuning the instrument. This video is running a little bit alongside, so I'm going to go ahead and break that up and go into tuning the instrument in the next video. If you've liked this video and you found it helpful at all, go ahead and hit that uh, thumbs up button. Remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And to be notified the next time I put up a video, go ahead and hit that little bell icon. Thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you on the next one.